All right, guys, welcome to my PC build. What I would consider here for, you know, the year 2020, not the top end gaming build, but not also a budget build, kind of a half and half in between build. Great for most gaming nowadays at 1440, higher FPS, you know, just enjoying what's currently out there. We're starting off with a Ryzen 5 3600. Asus Tough Gaming X570 motherboard, a pair of 8 gig G Skill Ripsoft 5s, the Samsung 970 Evo SSD, the wonderful Radon 5700 XT, probably the best card for the price. An awesome Meshify C computer case. With the tinted window, honestly, I could care less about RGB. And since this thing is going to be sitting right by my face, I don't want to get a tan while I'm playing. I just want my stuff hidden beautifully. It's sleek. It's elegant. I love it. The Corsair RM750X for a bit of longevity, reliability. And, you know, later on the road, if I upgrade, we're all set. We don't got to buy another power supply. I'd rather spend a little bit more money now than have to buy another one later on. Fully modular, just use the cables that I need, get in, get out. Since the Meshify C only does come with two cases, we did pick up another set of the Chromax 140 millimeter fans for some intake, and we'll be moving the included fans from the fractal up to the top for an exhaust. Well, here's all the supplies, let's get into the build. All right, we're gonna start off with the build by unboxing the case, because, well, you don't got a case, and you got nowhere to put your goodies. Oh, don't mind me as I murder this box real quick. Oh, moment of truth. Good packaging. Oh, man. Oh, this might be... A little bit harder than I thought it would be. I can grab it by the plastic. Nope. All right, bear with me, guys. All right. One and out. Just flip it upside down. Shake it a little bit. Guess what? Nothing's coming out. <laughs> wow, that's really in there, guys. really don't want to break the rest of the box but I'm getting hit on something which I just realized is the handles right here so let's flip these guys out right, both sides try it again ready yeah there we go this looks promising nope well first five minutes of the PC build is gonna be me trying to get those damn boxes out of here. There you have it, guy, the Fractal Meshify C. Oops, I'm knocking everything over here. Sketchy. All right, here we go. There it goes. Well. The tripod fell off the table. So, this video is now officially, unofficially, sponsored by Gorilla Glue. When your tripod falls and you break your attachments, super glue to get back on track. But in all seriousness, this stuff is awesome. Just used it, probably took 30 seconds to put it all back together. I mean, I held this stuff in place for two to three seconds. And it's back on track. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit so I don't accidentally super glue my phone to the attachment. And we'll get back to this. All right, guys. So while we're waiting for the super glue to dry on the phone attachment, because, you know, secure your tripods. Here's the Fractal Meshify C. Absolutely gorgeous case. Nice texture on the front. Fully open for nice airflow. Nice little contrast with the metallic emblem here. As I said earlier, we went with the tinted window. 
you can still see a bit through it, but not enough to be obnoxious. You know, kind of enjoy your build, but don't see all the mess that's inside. I know nowadays with regular PC building, it's kind of cleaned up everything like that, especially with good cable management. But still, I'm at the point in my life where I want to be a nice midpoint between elegant and still fun gaming. Like I said, fully tempered glass window, a nice removable mesh grill on the top. And a quick peek from the back. Guys. All right, guys, we're back in action. Fixed the tripod. Just got the stuff out of the case. Figure, you know what? We don't really need to be worrying about um, you guys watching me how to take a box out of a cardboard box. If you can't figure that out, I'm sure there's a YouTube video somewhere out here. So just to be safe, we're going to start off with taking off the side panels here. Thumb screws, very comfortable, I would say. Short, so just be careful once you're done. And I feel like this might fall off as soon as I take this last one off. So I recommend you just grab it from the bottom as you slowly take away this last screw. And I'm guessing, am I right? Yep, it's gonna pop right off. So definitely be careful when you take this off. Um, it pretty much just came right off. It wasn't holding from the bottom. I've heard stories about people shattering their glass panels. So I'm gonna go put this over there on something soft away from my clumsy self and the cat. So we at least have a piece of equipment left for later. To be completely honest, the safest place that I found for it is back in the box it came from. Just wedged between the two pieces of styrofoam. Seems pretty secure. Nothing really can get over here. Can't trip in it even if I do. It still has a bit of a barrier between the cardboard and the styrofoam. Definitely recommend stashing it somewhere away from everything. Here's a quick view of the inside of the case. It's actually so dark in here. It's a little bit hard to see most of the details. I think my camera is doing a bit of a good job. Um, spacious. Nice cable management ports. Open shroud for... Some breathability, but I think we're probably going to end up putting the power supply face down anyway to get the airflow from the bottom, not the hot air from the inside. Comes with one, two case fans included, which, as like I said before, I'm going to switch this one up top. I'm going to leave this one here, and then we're going to add the two Noctuas that we purchased earlier, two 140 millimeter fans right to the front. Let's go ahead and finish taking off these side panels and get started with the build. This is a pretty neat feature. As I'm taking out the power supply unit cover, screws stay attached. Good thing, because we'd probably lose them. I like it. Continuing on, side panel door. I realize it's kind of hard to see. It's black on black. There is two screws up here. They're a little tight to begin with, so we're just going to start them off with the screwdriver. And then up being just regular thumb screws, but I mean they're pretty tight on here from the factory. So like I said, I recommend starting them. Release, sand, it should pop out. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, yep, there it is. Just gotta slide it out. Again, like the power supply cover. Attached bolts. I like it. I'm gonna go and put this in with the glass piece so it doesn't get lost, bent, scratched. You know the drill. So we opened up the back side of the case. Sorry, that's my table making some weird noises. It's gorgeous. Cable management. Seems to be Velcro tie downs. It's gonna be great for later. Supply kit right here inside. It's gonna be our accessories. Judging by this, it looks like a set of cable ties. We have some screws to stand off for the motherboard. USB connectors and audio, all your stuff for your motherboard right here. Good deal. All right, guys, so I got started. I pulled out the power supply unit. This is going to be the Corsair RM750X. Fully modular, as you can see. Um, at this point, we're this is going to be the first thing we're going to put in, just because I know it's going to be a pain to deal with later. Um, we know off the bat, I need a trash can. Let's throw that over there. We don't need that. 
I got a new 24 pin connector for the motherboard, which we got right here. Two eight pin connectors for the graphics card. That's not that, that's not that. As you can tell, Corsair is very generous in providing pretty much every single cable you might need for your build. Um, don't need those, don't need those. I mean, I'll find these eventually. All right, we need one 8-pin connector, again, for the motherboard. We need a 4-pin connector. Six. Oh, look, this one's actually labeled CPU. We're going to need that one for the CPU. I guess they're all labeled CPU. All right, PCI Express. We need one of these. And one more of those. That All right, so we've gone ahead and pulled out the um, PSU. I figure it should be the first thing we get in there. Kind of get it out of the way, get everything organized. This is going to be the Corsair 750XRM. Fully modular with all the ports. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's a little bit dark. In the case of this build, I mean, we don't have a lot going on. You know, my last computer was built in 2004 and where we had so many more drives and stuff like that. But pretty much, I'm just pulling out the cables that I'm going to need. We're going to need the 24-pin connector for the uh, motherboard itself. Two PCI Express. Eight-pin connectors for our graphics cards. So we're going to put those to the side. And we have two CPU. We need an eight-pin, which is right here. And then a four-pin connector as well for later on. One of these guys is going to split and just into four. We'll need that. And then we'll just take one of these guys for our... Actually, we don't even need this because we don't have any drives since we're on the solid state M2. I feel like I should put this in now, just so I don't have to deal with it later. I know I'm definitely going to regret not doing it, but I don't need it. I'll worry about it later. Let's get this PSU back in here. All right, guys, going ahead and installing this. Just get all these zip ties out of the way. Uh, I swear, half the build time is going to end up being just taking stuff out of packaging, removing these little twisty type things, removing plastics, all this fun stuff. So, uh, here we go. 24 pin. Twenty four pin. All right, got a little confused for a second. All right. I remember, you just want to push. Well, I didn't hear a click, but I definitely felt the click. There we go. That's a good solid click. Motherboard power, as you can tell. There we go. Two separate pins, and then your one twenty four pin connector is going to go into the motherboard itself. All right, guys, just reading up a little bit. I actually noticed that your cables from Corsair do come labeled PCIe and then CPU to kind of make it easier when you kind of got everything mumbled and jumbled up in there to find them out. So we're just going to go ahead and make these easy. I've also noticed that, well, these are two four pin connectors and this is just the one eight pin. I've noticed that, so you don't mess it up, there is a size difference, obviously, in the attachment clip. I don't know if you can see that. This one's almost as wide as my fingernail. This one's a little bit skinnier. So, given that it's only going to let me get one in there, we're going to put this one in first. Like, it's, like I said, waiting for that click. Get the other one labeled CPU. Get it in there. And like I said, this will be nice when I feed everything through. I know that this is going to be the CPU one. Really appreciate that. PCIe. Again, it's a six and two pin connector. Obviously, you know, just kind of smash them together and get them in here. So let me just really quick get this all set up and I'll get you caught up. 
You know, the neat thing about making this build with the guys, I actually noticed something. So it's gonna be the eight pin connector is gonna go straight into the power supply unit. And then I noticed on the other side, there's two of them together right there. I didn't realize there's one cable for two connections. So we will need two eight pin connectors for the card. So this actually shaves one cable off from the um, power supply unit. So not a bad deal. So we're gonna plug this in and get these guys over there into the video card later on. You know, the neat thing about making this build with the guys, I actually noticed something. So it's gonna be the eight pin connector is gonna go straight into the power supply unit. And then I noticed on the other side, there's two of them together right there. I didn't realize there's one cable for two connections. So we will need two eight pin connectors for the card. So this actually shaves one cable off from the um, power supply unit. So not a bad deal. So we're gonna plug this in and get these guys over there into the video card later on. So we got all the cables plugged in. Just gonna give them a quick check. Nice little tug to make sure they all fit in there. Um, hopefully we won't need any more because I'm a feeling it's gonna be a bit of a pain to get all these in here. You know, given that we have the hard drive shrouds in here, I'll probably take these out because I won't be using them. But yeah, that's how it is. Kind of make it easier. Like I said, we're gonna put this face down so we can get fresh cold air intake. Little warning label. Silent operation. Pretty much it means that um, this fan is not gonna turn on unless it needs to. So pretty much that's Corsair's way of telling me don't freak out, your stuff is not broken. It's just not gonna turn on. All right, so if I want this to go face down, probably should have paid attention to this when I took it out. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. I guess it does. All right, so obviously, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. Line up the holes. There's a hole in the mother, on oh, the motherboard, on the power supply unit and your case. So four included screws somewhere. We got a set of four screws that came with the actual case itself. And we got another bag that came with the Corsair. So I'm gonna play it safe. I figured Corsair screws and the Corsair supplies should get that in there nicely. I probably should have done this before I put all the cables in there just to make my life easier. Cause now I'm trying to balance this thing while I'm trying to get a screw in there. All right, here we go for a screw. First one in. Now as I'm doing this, I'm realizing maybe I should be a hand model, you know? Since that's pretty much most of what you guys are gonna see, you know? never know who's watching this video. Maybe somebody wants me to be a hand model for them. All right, so we're gonna screw these in tight, not a little crazy, kind of just go back in, check them again, you know, try not to strip the screws, obviously, from over-torquing them or anything like that. Um, I think I did it right. Like I said, we're gonna put this down. So, this honestly looks like some kind of weird cyborg thing with some crazy-ass dreadlocks, to be honest, but. Yeah, man, we have power. Not sure if that was, yeah, it's, it's called culturally insensitive. <laughs> Anyways, power supply unit. Seems pretty easy enough. Grab all your cables. Shove them in the hole. That's what she said. Get all this in here and pull, you know, push and pull. Push these guys in as you get more space. And there we go. First one in. Holy smokes, I know I said that this power, wow, okay, we are actually really close on space, let me show you guys this. All right, I'm sure you guys can see this right here, power supply is right here, 
the cage to the hard drive is going to be right here. So even if I push this all the way in, this is about as snug as it can get. I mean, there's really not much space. I mean, I can even get my finger in there, to be honest. Um, since I know I'm probably not going to use this guy, I'm actually going to go ahead and take that out. So let me go ahead and do that really quick so I have more space to work with. And um, yeah, because if anything, if I do add additional drives, these are, I'm assuming, are the brackets for the SSDs, which is probably what I'm going with. So I'm going to put new drives up here. Let me take these guys out here, get more space, and be a little bit more comfortable with the power supply unit. All right, so I ended up taking out the hard drive uh, brackets first. I guess I forgot my hard drive, you know, carrier, carriers, there you go, hard drive carriers. Um, I kind of skipped this step because I figured every case is different. However, I realized if you do have one of these fractal mesh of ICs, um, there is a dust cover on the bottom that's going to be living right here. Um, essentially, you're going to pull it out. I want to show you guys this just in case you don't know how to figure it out. Um, there's going to be four screws at the bottom. Unscrew those. And actually, once you get the hard drive case out, which kind of looks like this, I realized you can't get it out from the top itself. So what you want to do, once you get it loose, you actually have to slide it out from the power supply unit. So I'm glad I didn't install the power supply unit because I wasn't getting that thing out of there anyway. So once we got the power supply unit out, we got the cage out. And, you know, obviously save this. I'm going to put the screws back in here so I don't lose them. Put in the box, you know, in case later on, for whatever reason, who knows, if we ever do end up using this, we have it and we won't lose it. But like I said, if you're not going to use this, take it out first before you start messing with your power supply unit. All right, we got the hard drive cage out. Feeding my little dreadlock Rastafarian friend here, Mr. Corsair. Through this. Actually, significantly easier to do this while it's on the side. Um, kind of line it up. You really don't have a way to support this, so just kind of grab it by the cables with your left hand right here while you're careful. You know, start it, start the thumb screws. Man, they're pretty straightforward. Um, like anything, you know, don't go crazy with it. Don't over torque it. The last thing you ever want to do is strip a screw. Um, hand tighten. Eh, and a little bit. I can barely get a quarter turn out of this before it starts feeling kind of uncomfortable. Um, but there we are. First part completely done. Power supply in. It's pretty much the heart of the unit. Unless the CPU, well, CPU is more like the brain. So we're going to call this the heart of the unit. First step done. Let's carry on, my friends. All right, guys, so originally I was going to go ahead and start working on the motherboard, but then I realized I had to move my two fans to make space for the um, Noctua NFA14 Chromax. I mean, these guys are awesome. I mean, I already took a peek in it when they came in because they came in before the other parts. I mean, just the sheer size difference between this guy and this guy. Once I get this guy out, I'll show you the size comparison. Um, great fans, one of the highest reviewed fans. Seems everyone loves them. Um, for you guys customizing out your um, your PC, you got a multitude of colors to choose from. We got white, yellow, blue, green, red, and black attachments. Um, great case. And like I said, we do have the option for three 120 millimeter fans here in this case if we do remove the shroud cover. But since everything is kind of enclosed, I like the cleanliness of it. And actually, given that two 140, 140 millimeter fans, it's going to give more airflow than three 120s. We're going to go to that option. Saves a bit of money because we can reuse these for the time being. And then later on, if we decide to upgrade, get some more fans in here, we'll get them in there. All right, the so funny thing is, you know, I don't know if I told you this guy's earlier, but it's actually my first computer build in a very long time. Everything's changed. Here's me trying to shove this screwdriver on this side. You know, as we learn as we go, hopefully if you guys watching this learn anything, these little tiny details, you know, hopefully it'll speed up your build. Um, might be simple common knowledge for anyone else. For me, I just figured out your screws to your fans are actually on the outside of the case. And actually I just realized this is not one that I have to remove because I don't have an exhaust fan. So judging by the fact that I got to remove this one, this does mean I got to remove the front cover. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it should just be a pull from the bottom. Yep, there we go. Didn't break anything. At least I don't think I did. It's always reassuring. So I don't really want to mess with um, the cables because this case still has the cables up top. We're just going to try to do this 
one-handed or I can just balance this on my head. A little fancy expensive hat while I remove these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen them first. So just four screws. And as you can see right here, we have the brackets, the 120 milli, milli, wow, milliliters. What am I playing with water now? No, 120 millimeter fan brackets, the wider ones for the 140s. And like I said, you can see again, I could theoretically put a fan down in here, but because we have the shroud right here and the PSU is completely enclosed, it's almost kind of pointless. So, you know, less fans should be less noisy. It's actually really awkward because at the same time I'm trying to get these out and trying to balance this cover on my head and it's actually quite uncomfortable because one of the um, clips is digging right into my head. So the sooner I get this done, the better we'll all be. All right, so four screws out. Fan coming out, I'm trying to at least. Just gotta feed. I'm gonna stick my face in there for you guys, but. All right. All right, feed the fan out. All right, there we go. So, to give you a size comparison, here is the included fan that came with the fractal case. And of course, everything's stuck together here. Whatever, I'll we'll figure it out. So once again, the 120 millimeter fan, the 140s, I'm losing all my attachments. As you can tell, quite a bit of sizable size different right there. And try to get this without dropping the green one, but as you can tell, nice little upgrade there. Definitely worth it. At least I hope it is. That's what everyone tells me to do. So gotta trust what the internet says sometimes. Not always, especially not WebMD, because if you did that, we'd all be dead, but. online reviews. All right, so we got the Noctua Chromex here. Um, this might sound really dumb, but it does come with um, anti-vibration pads, I guess. I haven't really figured out if it's supposed to go on the outside, on the inside. I mean, I'm assuming if it's gonna be an anti-vibration thing, it's gonna be the thing that's touching the case. So, yeah, I'm not even sure if these are just decorative at this point for the outside one. So, I mean, we're gonna mix it up a little bit. I mean, I kind of want to go with the blacked out case. So we're gonna put these on the back side because that's gonna be the side of the fan's gonna be visible once it's installed. And then we're gonna put these white ones on the inside. I mean, if it looks kind of trash, we'll swap them out, but there's only one way to find out. Also, I realized there's no way to tell which, actually just kidding. Airflow is labeled right here on the fan itself. Um, arrows pointing backwards, so label out means airflow is coming in. So this is gonna be our intake fan, so we want air coming in, so we're gonna mount these up. So let me get these little doohickey push pads, whatever you can call them in here, and we'll get back to the build. Well guys, I was messing with these and you know what I realized? I was gonna put these in the front to kind of hide them, but you know, I kinda, I kinda like them just on the front. It gives that nice bit of contrast, you know, especially since most of the case is gonna be dark, it's gonna be high tinted glass. It'll be nice to see little slivers of white. I mean, honestly, if I hate it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, kind of from my research, I saw that between the fan face itself and my video card, I'm gonna have about six millimeters of clearance. So I mean, worst case scenario, I just gotta pop the video card out and swap these fans out, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the white in the front. I mean, it looks nice. It gives a bit of contrast, gives the case a little bit of color. Hopefully it kind of brings some excitement here and there, but um, yeah. Editor's note, uh, super speed this section so people don't get bored.
All right, guys, so we're back. Like I said, there's no instructions with the fan, so I can only assume. Yeah, I can only assume that this is the way to do it. Um, I mean, that would make logical sense that these are going to be attached. The the rubber bits are going to be attached to the um, the case itself to kind of help it snug and stop the vibrations. And then the outside four are just going to be mainly decorative or kind of like the you know, the part that you'll actually see. So I could be wrong. Like I said, there's no instructions. There's no real way of knowing. So we're going to do the, it's called the Oreo fan to the front and then the black stoppers to the front of the case itself. Let me go ahead and do the other one really quick and then we'll catch up back on the install. All right, guys. So we got the Chromax fan set up again, using my head as a prop up. Air going forward. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. First one in. Let me do a quick test fit. Okay, so we do have a bit of um, some movement that we can work with up and down. Um, the case obviously had some fans. So did the Noctua did come with its own little, um, not fans, I mean screws. Sorry, guys. Um, the Noctua did come with its own screws, which are a little snug. And this is obviously a little bit harder than I thought it would be. You'd be surprised trying to balance the case, case space, I guess you want to call it. And trying to get these screws in here. All right, this is where, you know, the first hour of your build is going to be apparently just taking your time and trying to get screws in here. Because as much as I like screwing things, ha! This is not my kind of screwing that I want to do. Holy smokes, guys. All right, let me try to figure out a way how I can prop this without removing all this cabling. Let me get these fans in and then we'll, 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 we'll come back. All right, guys, I figured it out. As I'm trying to get these screws in, what I've come to realize is there's actually no receiving end i guess you would call it for the screws themselves um sorry my hands in the way here but um if you look inside the actual holes where the screws go it is completely smooth that's for the reason we're having such difficulty with this is actually as you're screwing this screw into the fan itself you're pretty much carving into the plastic to make sure that these screws go in you know that's kind of why i stopped earlier because i felt a little uncomfortable i didn't want to feel like i was kind of you know stripping the the screws or over token it but actually you know you're almost just, I don't want to say destroying, but you're almost damaging your fans a little bit to kind of get that great grip on there. But, you know, just don't don't feel bad. I mean, obviously, I just figured it out. Um, I know it can be a little terrifying. You know, it's not going in. You don't want to force it. Uh, but, yeah, no, once you kind of get going with it, this thing's falling off my head. Um, balance it. All right. Kind of once you get going, it just kind of, it's a self-taping thing, I guess, to, to an extent. Um, yeah, but they're in there. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more comfortable than now. Now that I got to kind of put more pressure into it, you got it going, and there we are. So that's the first fan in here. Um, I'll adjust it a little bit later. Like I said, I still have a bit of movement room. Um, the other one should give me about a finger's width space. I'm going to see if I should put it towards the top or more to so the center once I kind of get all figures out. So let me get this guy in, and then we'll, we'll show you how this goes. All right, so this is why I really do love building this thing with you guys and seeing it, learning as I go. Here's something you don't realize until after you do it. So here's our fan that we put in, but our cable sticking out on this side. I mean, that's kind of my fault for not paying attention to it. But like I said, these are little things that I want people to realize they should pay attention to. So obviously now I got to go back in, take the fan out. Let me get out of the way here and, you know, flip the fan <laughs> So it actually comes out through the um, to the ground material on the other side. It probably needs to be fed out through here for a little bit cleaner look, and it's going to come back out here and then plug into the motherboard. But like I said, little things that you just don't realize when you're doing it, you know. So let me go ahead and flip this fan. All right, guys, check it out. Covers back on. Both fans installed. The white accent pieces. I think it looks pretty sleek. Look at that. My little Oreo fans. We ended up moving the fractal. 120 millimeter case fan that we pulled from the front it's up here at the top exhaust now 
So hopefully that can get a little bit more airflow. You know, later on, my plan is to replace this one with a Noctua and these two up here with the 140s. Noctua is just like these. So pretty much a nice set of airflow. But I mean, this is, I think, it for casework. I think from this point now, we can move on to our motherboard and actually start getting the, the you know, the, the main components of the computer going. All right, moving on to the motherboard install now. You know, we unpackage it, everything. We have the I.O. shield here. Um, pretty simple. I kind of like this black face type deal. Not to be with, confused with the black face issues that we're having, you know, political drama, whatever. Anyways, the black is really neat because it matches the case, so that'd be kind of nice. I mean, obviously, I'm probably never going to look at the back of the case past the date. So, um, essentially, your motherboard is going to be sticking out through here. The I.O. shield just needs to come out the front. Um, general rule of thumb. The multiple holes, you can see that better with the light. There you go. The multiple holes are your sound card outputs. Um, standard in every case and every motherboard is these will go towards the bottom. Um, essentially, this should, let me get a better angle at this, just pop right in. So you take your IO shield and you push it until you hear a nice click, hopefully. All right, no nice click, but it's kind of in there. It's holding in there. Let me just. I'll flip this around. Oh no, there is a click. Yeah, so definitely push, you know, in a little bit. Start the corners, make your way around. Um, yeah, there you go. Four corners, four clicks. Seems pretty solid. That's your IO shield. Um, let me get you a better view of this. Once it's installed, pretty sleek. I do like the yellow. Um, it's actually making me want to question. If I want to switch these guys out to yellow to kind of keep going with the theme of the case, the kind of black and yellow. Damn, now I got that song stuck in my head. But you know, the black, <laughs> the black and yellow theme might be good. Um, the good thing is these are easy swaps. I realized I can actually swap these out from the outside of the case without even having to remove them. So these might be easier to swap out later on if I do want to change the color. Um, so yeah, that's the IO shield. Definitely get that in there first and then let's get working on the motherboard. All right guys, moving on to the motherboard install. Take it out of the packaging. I would say before you touch anything like your motherboard, your CPU, touch your case. You guys can't see it, my case is right there. Touch the metal part of the case, kind of get any kind of static shock out of your hands. Um, the AMD CPU is actually super simple. There should be a little bar right here. You just lift this little guy, you know, hello. I'm here to eat your chip. Anyways, that's just me being silly. Um, it might be hard to see, but if you actually move the arm back and forth, you can see into the chipset sockets and you can see how they'll eventually grab and tighten onto the actual chipset. We have the Ryzen here, AMD. Um, like always, I mean, there's little indents right here for you to cut, I mean, to grab it with, not cut out. Um, there's little cutouts for you to grab them. You know, try to only grab this from the side. Obviously be super careful not to drop these. As a point of reference, here in the corner, you will see there's a little tiny triangle that needs to be matched up with the triangle on the motherboard. That will give you the proper orientation of how to place this into the um, socket itself. So let me stick my face a little bit closer in here and see what I can find out really quick. All right, it's crazy hard to see because it's really just a tiny little cutout in the corner. So for my particular motherboard, the um, Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus. Um, it's right here in the corner. So what we're gonna do is just to make life easier, um, just line it up with the with the little triangle in the corner. So like I said, we got the triangle in the corner going with that one, um, super gently. Like I said, no pressure needs to be placed on this. It should just pop right in. Um, I'm realizing now this is terrifying to do, to be honest. And that's it, actually. That was super simple, didn't push it in. Um, at first I kind of placed it on top, I wasn't moving. If you place it on top and it's not going, don't push down, just kind of pick it up a little bit and kind of pick it up, drop, pick it up, drop, pick it up, drop. It should automatically just fall right in. Um, you know, give it a good little wiggle. Don't put any pressure on it, but it should feel secure. I mean, you'll know, it's pretty straightforward. If, it in, if it's not going in, it's probably in wrong. Just double check the corners. Push it down, you're gonna get a bit of resistance because obviously it's a clamp that's trying to grab onto all those little teeth. Push that down, give it a good little push and jiggle, make sure it's inset, and that's it. Guys, 
the first CPU is in. That's it. Simple as that. This is the hardest and probably most terrifying part of your entire build. All right, guys, on to installing the um, DDR4 RAM. You'll notice that it is notched. The notch is slightly offset, so you can't really put this in wrong. I mean, if you look at it right here, it might be hard to see on the angle, but there is a small notch right there. So if you, if you, know, if you just put your card over it, or your card, your memory stick over it, you'll notice that the two lines don't match. If we flip it over, bam, we got the matching lines. Um, this is gonna be highly dependent on your actual motherboard itself. Um, check to make sure which ones of the receivers, I guess you want to call them, will take your memory sticks. In my particular case, you know, we got channel A and channel B. Um, the Asus motherboard that we have recommends the two lighter color channels. That's going to be these two guys right here. And if I'm not mistaken, these don't bend back. So, okay, honestly, just one bends back. Don't try to force this out. Don't want to break anything. So, like I said, according to my particular instruction booklet that I got sitting right here, um, it wants the first channel, actually the second channel. So channel 2B and 8, yeah, okay, just double checking. B2 and A2. So to make this work, we're going to just put these guys in really quick. Once again, look at that. All right, so into the lighter colored ones, these guys should just drop right in. And they're just gonna get pushed down with some pressure. Should be in, yep, there you go. The latch and the second set. Just straight down, and sit really quick, make it easier on myself, because you gotta line these up. All right, they're in all the way. I guess they're both in all the way. Actually, no, this one's not in all the way. Should click, there you go, click, click. Some great looking cards so far. I'm very happy with the whole theme of this board. Everything's nice, dark, black. Absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, can't complain. All right, guys, just had to do a little bit of reading since we have two um, M.2 slots. According to what my friends are saying and everyone else, you know, you want to try to use the first one, even though this one seems a little neater with the heat sink and all that. I mean, if we ever add a second one later on, I guess we could do that. But um, heat sink, in, not heat sink insulation, um, M.2 drives, stick on the one closest to your CPU, get the most out of it. It's probably gonna get recognized easier as your boot drive. Um, to make things easier, Right after we finish this, we're probably gonna install the uh, CPU cooler. So um, since the one we have plugs directly into the board itself, we gotta remove these brackets. So we're gonna do this really quick so we can have just a little bit more space to work on the end. That two slot later. And these are really tight. All right, all right there we go. And like always, it's a little terrifying, you know, putting any kind of pressure or any kind of force on it. You know, just be gentle, give it a little torque. Very good. And there we go. These guys are loose. Not that loose though. Just a little bit of pressure to kind of get these screws going. Don't want them falling over and you know scratching the board or anything like that. All right, there we are. First bracket is out. And second bracket as well. Now, when you look at your actual motherboard, you are going to notice there are actually little, I guess, numbers on them that specify the size of it. We are rocking the um, Samsung 970 Evo, which is a 2280, I believe. Box is somewhere. Anyways, 2280, it is labeled right here on the motherboard itself. We did receive. Kind of hard to see a standoff packet. So what you want to do is get those standoffs in there to raise it up. So let's get that in there. All 
Now uh, these guys are tiny, but doesn't seem to be too difficult. Oh, that was probably the easiest thing I've done so far in this build. Let me get my hands out of the way for you guys. Stand off in there, you know, don't, like I said, don't go crazy, hand tighten it. Get it in there. Here's our Samsung 9, 970 Evo. Should just go straight in, almost at an angle. There it is. It kind of sticks up a little bit for resistance. Um, obviously, you know, get your screws ready. These are some tiny, tiny, tiny little screws. This is where that magnetic screwdriver is going to come in handy. I don't want to lose this. I'm showing you, you know, with tiny screws. Magnetic is always better. Even now, my magnet's not even all that strong. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to push, we want to push this car down, lay it flat. Should line up perfectly with the standoff we just put in, and just screw it in. And there we go. Those screws are ready. Like I said, tight, but don't overkill it. Don't strip your screws. And there you go. There is your new hard drive installed on your board. Nice and simple. All right, guys, moving on with the install. We whoop, almost lost the tripod again. It's going to be twice in a day. Oh, that's why. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, guys, moving along with the install, we're not going to put the um, heatsink fan or the CPU fan on the um, the CPU. Pretty straightforward. Since we removed the brackets right before we um, installed the the solid state drive, the SSD, should make it a lot easier. Um, you will notice there is thermal paste already applied onto the bottom of the heatsink here. So just be careful when placing it on there. Um, normally I would swap out thermal paste, but this is just a temporary solution right now just for stay within the budget. We are going to use the stock fan and eventually we're going to upgrade to a better fan, to, you know, to allow for more overclocking and modifications there. But pretty simple itself. Four screws, four posts, um, you know, obviously line it up. Your CPU fan connectors are going to be here, at least on my board it is. Check your board. Um, yeah. Another thing I do want to mention, pay attention to this. Um, these two are actually shorter in distance than these, so there is an actual orientation. So just looking at the, the cutouts and the holes that we have, um, this is going to go essentially this way or this way. Choice is yours, I'm assuming. Um, they look pretty, yeah, they're pretty much the same. So just make sure it's, you know, the rectangle shape put in the right spot. I've seen a few people take this actual cover off and flip it over just so the AMD stays on the top side of the actual cooler, kind of for aesthetics, but like I said, it's only temporary for us. And I'm trying to see if I can do this with minimal cabling. That is not going to reach, so. Yeah, we'll just rock it like that. Kind of keep it matching with that. Like I said, it's all aesthetics. It's on your, it's your build. You do it the way you want. I'm going to, you know, kind of have the AMD match up with the tough gaming stuff up here. So, just line it up. In the four holes. Kind of pivot out, and that's it. Couldn't be any easier. Um, just get your screwdriver. That was that one. And just tighten these down. Um, like anything, like always, go easy. You know, never force anything. And I can actually barely get my screwdriver in there. They seem to be thumb screws. Let's try and see if I can get them started. Nope, there is no hope in getting those started by hand. All right, let's see what I can do here. So 
start with one corner, make our way around. So just coming back really quick, I had to check on something, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed as I was screwing it in, there was a bit like a weird cracking, snapping sound. Well, I realized that's actually okay. Um, there's a spring on the actual screw itself here that helps kind of put pressure on the CPU fan. And that's kind of was just turning. That's what you're hearing right there, the little click click. Um, it's just turning as you're screwing it in. So nothing's actually getting damaged. Um, you kind of feel like you're screwing forever. Eventually, it's just gonna stop. So, you know, just go until you can't anymore. Um, yeah, that's it. Take your CPU wire or CPU fan wire, find the CPU header, which in my case is the one here on the left. Get the plug. I'm trying to do this as neatly as possible because this thing's gonna be sticking out. Four pins, line them up. This is really hard to do standing up. Line the pins up, and just push straight down. There you go. And there you have it guys. That is pretty much your motherboard fully constructed and ready to go into the case. Uh, let me just tidy up this. I don't know how I feel about this. We'll figure this out and then, you know, when we come back, we'll, we'll get the case standoffs in and then get the motherboard ready to push in. And then technically we're pretty much just plug in and go. All right, guys, moving on. We're going to now work on the motherboard standoffs. These are these little guys right here. Essentially, what they do is they're going to lift the motherboard just a little bit of, up off the um, actual back of the um, case here. Let me tell you how important this is. My first build ever back in like 2000, I would say, in three or four, I put my motherboard in without these standoffs. You want to know how disappointing it was to hit the power button, see everything light up for a split second, and then completely die? Um, yeah, don't 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 be like me when I did it the first time. Make sure you put your stance offs in. It protects the back of the motherboard from making contact with the metal and shorting everything out. Um, luckily, I took the board back, explained what happened. I guess maybe they felt bad, and they replaced it. I mean, I've learned that lesson. This is this is technically my third build, but my first build in almost 14 years. So I'm glad to know that these are still around. As much as I hate them. They're important. Keep them around. Protect your investments. All right, guys. So when it comes to your standoffs, you're going to have nine total. Well, two, four, six. So. We have eight here, mainly because there is one little standoff point right here. This is kind of like the guide. This one doesn't get used. It's just more so for you to place your motherboard on and help you kind of pivot and align it. So you're not trying to find nine little holes through the holes of the motherboard to line them up. So essentially it's one for each corner and then right halfway point. So we'll get them started. And our particular case did come with a little attachment to help us. I wish it would help me now, but. All right. As you can see, there's the first one. And we'll just keep on going. There's number two. And there's really not a lot of wiggle room to get these guys in straight, that's for sure. Pretty sure it's the right hole. There we go.
All right, so there we go. All the standoffs are in. And then we have the little adapter tool, which does add a, um, a Phillips head to kind of help us kind of tighten them better than our hands because, I mean, it's, there's not much you can grab onto. Those are tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, just be careful. Just go until you feel they're snug, you know. once they're, I mean, they're pretty much in there already. Just you want to tighten them. Don't strip them. But like I said, this is holding the entire weight of your motherboard, your CPU, your graphics card, everything else. So just be careful with it. Like I said, just twist it enough. And like I said, this is the little attachment. I'll try to show you guys. This right here goes on top of the standoff and then, you know, use your screwdriver to tighten up a little bit. Just put it on top. And turn you know do it by feel kind of watch it once it gets going it'll stop once you feel resistance that's good i'm telling you this thing is not going to go anywhere you know if you're working on your car i'd say go to town on it you know make sure things tight but i mean then again this is a completely different world One of them, you're, you know, you're, you're moving a couple hundred pounds of stuff. You don't want any of those bolts flying off. You don't want to go down the highway and have your tire fall off. So, you know, proper torque specs is good here. Here, and as long as it's tight, you know, your computer, I mean, I'm pretty sure 99% of you are going to build it once and not move it. So don't go crazy. That one's snug. That one actually turned a lot less than the other ones. But, I mean, I can't get my fingernail under it. So I feel pretty, pretty good about that guy. Let's get these last three going. All right, there you have it. So eight actual screws themselves and then the one post that's just there to help us guide everything back in. All right, so I'm pretty sure I got everything out of the way. I got most of these cables going. I think this one might have to come back out because it's not going to reach. And there is a case fan header right here pretty much when the motherboard goes in. So this one might have to come back out. But the motherboard should not block that in case I have to pull it out and move it. And like I said, later on when we, move, when we swap these out for the 140s, we'll get an extender and run them to the bottom CPU case fans with a Y connector just to kind of group them up together. Um... So yeah, let's move on and get this motherboard in. I like running it by the CPU fan probably because that's nice and beefy. We get this fan wire in. And you know, obviously as terrifying as anything is. You just gotta line everything up and it should... Should line up. So you know, watch your motherboard. You can see where the standoffs are. I don't know if you guys heard that, but you did hear it kind of drop in place. That is the center standoff right here. That's the one that came with the case that tells us where everything should be. Um, to make sure you use the right standoffs, you know, just look into the nine holes of your motherboard and you'll see the, you know, the bronze color, gold color, whatever color you want to call it, standoffs that were there. So, you know, I'm looking, checking everything. All the standoffs are there. So that means that this is lined up perfectly. You know, checking the back right here, just took a quick peek, everything lines up, you know, none of the little extensions are protruding, everything lines up. So this is actually looking pretty good. I almost want to say we can go a little bit closer, but I mean, judging by where the standoffs are, I think we're all right. All right, guys, next step now is getting the motherboard screws. Obviously, there's eight standoffs, so we have eight of these. Um, this is actually where I'm going to be completely honest and wish I would have bought a magnetic screwdriver. Like, we have the small one that we used earlier for the um, SSD. It's actually not strong enough to get the... Um... Yeah, it's not strong enough to get this kind of weight on there. So... We're just gonna hope that I can get these in here without dropping any of them. Cause this is gonna be a pain to take everything out. So I'm just gonna drop them in one by one, start with these edges. I mean, it seems pretty simple. Just take your time, 
I'm not screwing these guys all the way, and I'm just getting them in place. So once again, you know, for some reason or whatever, they roll out. Um, yeah, so just take your time. This one's a little tricky just because there's not enough clearance to get my hand around there, but that seems pretty snug. I got three screws left and three holes, so this looks promising. And like with anything, it's always a little nerve-wracking when you have more screws left than you started with or than what you need, because that means you missed something somewhere. And I'm realizing now that this screw might be a little difficult because the CPU fan is in the way so let me see if I can take this guy out really quick I'll be being stubborn all right there we go you know obviously be careful you know your header pins are sticking out so if you are gonna be pulling moving and you know screwing stuff around just be mindful you don't want to bend a pin and you know spend the next couple of minutes to an hour trying to straighten everything out That one's spinning a little bit more than I wanted to. That was a little weird, but I think it just didn't catch. But so far, so good. And the last one in the corner. This one's going to be fun. Oh, between the I.O. shield and the fan being in the way. And, yep, there it is. I missed. And this is why we want magnetic screwdrivers. Because now they actually... The bolt flipped upside down, so I gotta get me some tweezers and see if I can pull this thing out. All right, got myself some tweezers. And, oh, very careful, I already dropped it, but here we go. Ah, would you look at that? See, this is what I mean. Just be careful. I almost wonder if I can use the tweezers to drop this thing in. This might not be a bad idea, actually. Well, this one's just going to be complicated. All right, there we go. Got it lined up with the tweezers. I'm going to go back in with the screwdriver to finish this guy off. Again, not a lot of clearance because of the fan and the edge of the cases. Just kind of tightening it till I feel resistance. There we go. We'll do a quick once over on all the screws that are left here. So it should be A3, this one's kind of loose. That doesn't have one. You know, as you tighten the other ones, the other ones will kind of come a little bit loose just because of, you know, the torque difference. And there you have it, guys. That, oh, oh, don't forget to plug your header back in. I want to start your CPU without any cooling. All right, always double check. We're gonna run this guy right here behind this heat sink. And there you go, guys. This is pretty much a few steps away from being done. The brains are in, the heart is in. Now we just gotta flip this guy around and start working on some wiring. All right, guys, so we've moved on to working on the cabling. You know, this is from earlier. We have all the cables from the power supply. These are the cables from the front, the ones from up here, the USB, the audio, the power, the reset. Um, 
I've realized I only have three fan headers. So this will not be ideal. So kind of take this bit with a grain of salt. I'm kind of, I'm going to just plug in essentially half of my fans. Well, I can plug three of them in. I'm going to plug the two intakes and one exhaust for now. And then I got to order actually a Y splitter and an extender. Mainly because, well, this guy, first of all, doesn't even reach my header, which is down here. This one will... Ideally, by the end of it all, I want to connect these two and just have one connected onto one and kind of combine them together. So when I'm managing everything on the motherboard itself, we have intake one exhaust and then another exhaust up here. Um, so it's going to be kind of like a little half-assed just to kind of get things going. But my recommendation is find out on your motherboard where all the plugs in. So we have the 24 pin connector up here and an additional eight pin connector to the top so when you're routing from the back just make sure you know your 24 pin connector is going to come out of here the a pins out of there and then all your front controls since on my motherboard they're all on the bottom we're going to actually bring them out of these little holes right here to kind of get a little bit more organized and keep the clutter down low all right guys not to be jumping around all over the place so what i've done i've kind of organized the cables in such a way that they're all coming out of there oops over there all right, guys, so what I've done is I've organized all the cables in such a way that they are going out of the grommet closest to their actual port. So we have the two motherboard power, or not the two motherboard, um, the two CPU powers, the motherboard, USB 3, the audio is down here. I know that's pretty hard to see because it's black on black. Um, let me flip the case around here really quick for you guys. So to kind of give you a better idea, like I said, it's the path of least traveling. USB 3 is going to plug in right there. 24 pin over here. We have the case fans, which I said earlier, it's a little too short. So this guy is not, probably not going to get plugged in today. Um, we do have the bottom one that's going to get plugged in because he plugs in right there. We have HD audio from the front panel coming out of this lower corner because it plugs right here. And then all of our power reset all those guys are going to go right in here. So like I said, you want to try to keep the clutter as minimal as possible here to maximize on the airflow. You know, try to just find the hole that works best. If it doesn't reach, obviously, you know, there's always extenders, adapters, all that stuff you can add. Um, I'm pretty sure if I would have flipped this fan probably 90 degrees or so, because right now I have that cable going up and then all the way back down. But regardless, I would need an adapter anyway, because I would like to get these two fans on one circuit itself. So again, another thing to pay attention to is when you're running your wires or installing your fans, kind of pay attention to where everything's going to go at the end. Because then again, like I said, you might end up issues like I just did. All right, guys, for our final bit, before we get the the GPU and your video card in. It's just down to the wiring. Um, you will need your manual for your motherboard itself because every board is different. Um, let's see if I can show you guys here really quick. You're gonna look for the page that has the system panel connectors. Um, essentially, every single pin is labeled for you. Um, positive, negatives, grounds, empty spots. You know, my, for example, there's a speaker option here. My case doesn't have one. My old one did. It would just beep and yell at you when something went wrong. It kind of give you a BIOS update and kind of status. Um, this particular motherboard itself has a LED blinking system. So if there's any issues, it will just blink specific colors and patterns that you to identify them. Um, the little cables themselves, I got five of them here. You know, you got the reset switch, power switch, the power LEDs, and this last one is the hard drive LEDs. Um, again, just match them up with the guy themselves. On the connectors themselves there is a tiny little triangle on the side i guess the hole you want to call it that is the positive side so the the triangle itself is the positive side so let's take for example let me get one of these double ones the reset switch little triangle right here to signify the positive terminal reset switch follow the little diagram it's pretty much I'm looking at the wrong thing. I confused myself there in a second. Pretty much the you know the the, the reset switch doesn't seem to have a positive or negative. I guess it's one of those that we just plug in. What's up? Power slow. Wow. All right, guys. So we're here now at the pretty much one of the final stages. It's the wiring of your CPU. Your every I mean just your CPU. Your 
All right, guys, we're here at the end of the build. It's coming down to just the wiring of the remaining few things that we have, the fans, the, the CPU is already plugged in. So just getting the power to where it needs to go. For this particular part, you will need the booklet that came with your motherboard as every single board is different. You know, there's different configurations. They're located in different spots. Um, what you wanna find out is where your system panel connectors are. So on one of your pages, you'll see this little diagram, it shows you the pins and you know your hard drive light reset, power LED speakers, things like that. Our particular case, we have five connectors. We don't have the speaker one because our motherboard has an LED flashing light diagnostic. So we won't hear any beeps, but we still have a few connectors. Um, to help you guys out on the connectors themselves, if you see a little triangle at the very tip of the connector, that is the positive point. So for example, when you're connecting the power switch, You'll see the power switch and then the ground, same thing for the PLEDs, you know, is a positive and negative. So if it asks you to plug in the positive, just make sure that the end with the little triangle goes in the positive spot. As for everything else, you know, you have to use your booklet to kind of figure these things out. We have the USB 3.0, which is gonna be the blue guy. On our book right here, it's labeled as this guy. It's right underneath the 24 pin, which is gonna be your motherboard power. We also have to plug in our CPU power, not the CPU fan, that's already in there. Um, my particular has an eight pin connector and then also a four pin. So as I mentioned earlier, when it came to the power supply section early on, um, these eight pin connectors do split. And hopefully you guys can see that they do split into two separate ones. So we have two four pin connectors. We really just need to use one of these and the other guy will tuck away. And that's pretty much it. We're leaving this guy out to the side. This is gonna be our video card power. So I'm gonna put this guy to the side. And then once we get the power card in, or the power card, the graphics card in here, we'll get this connected. So let me just do this really quick and we'll catch back up. All right, so I figured I should actually show you how to do this. Um, there is a clip on your connector, essentially. There's only one way this guy can really go in. I got this power, this fan power in the way. Let me get this out of the way. 24 pins, 24 pins, really can't mess it up. It's gonna go one way. Um, the angle that I'm at, because I have all the pressure on the cables themselves, I don't have wiggle room, so I actually gotta stand the case up to get this one in. So we'll come back to this. We have the USB 3.0. It looks like... There is a little marking here. It's a little triangle shape, which will allow it to fit in. So this guy's actually upside down. So if we just twist him around really quick, he should plug right in. But of course, again, see. All right, that's it. Put a little pressure. Get a firm clip on that. These guys we're doing later. And let's get these guys going. So same deal. There is a connector clip. Essentially, there's a connector clip on the back side of this. There's really only one way you can do it. Also, the pins themselves have a sort of contour to them, so you can't really put these guys in backwards. If you have an eight pin connector like I do, just kind of hold them together so they don't come apart. Um, like I said, I think I gotta actually stand this case up and see if I can do this a little bit better. It's actually really hard for me to work on these bigger ones with it laying down because I don't have that mobility to um, move the cables up and down. As for these guys, let me get in here really quick and get these plugged in. All right, sorry about that, guys. This is a little bit easier. I got a flashlight because it is, you know, like I said, black on black case. Things you don't realize, but you can't see squat when working in the dark. So a little bit of light. We went ahead and plugged in. Let's see if you can see this right here. The This is the audio from the front of the case wired in. This was actually probably the easiest one. It has even a little missing pin that shows you exactly how to plug it in. Um, now we'll go ahead and work on these bottom guys. Like I said, getting this PCIe out of the way. And my flashlight's dying. Fantastic. Using the booklet, like I mentioned, we'll just try to go from left to right. So we're gonna look for hard drive LED. Hard drive LED, positive is the first pin. So we're looking for that tiny little triangle. And with everything getting in the way, this guy is going in. There we go, one down. All right, what else have we got here? Reset switch, nope, power, reset switch.
guys reset switch going in we have the power switch which is the third and fourth pin at the top with the ground being there so pin three and four and I got these two little guys we got power LED positive which is wow these things are tiny and in the dark all right that means i have three on the bottom one two three we skipped that one all right so positive power is going to be the second pin from the right and then the negative power is the one back here all right and there you have it those are all your Top controls on top of the case plugged in. All right guys, so finally, the final step. I just got all the wiring done out of the way. Um, my fingers are pretty much shot from trying to get these small little connectors in here. Some of these cables from the power supply unit are just so damn crazy thick that they're hard to bend and move. I kind of got them out the best as well as I can. The only thing I got left is the double eight pin PCI connectors, which are gonna go for our video card. Here we have the 5700 XT, and my God, this thing is beefy. Like, it is actually terrifying how beefy this is. Um, beautiful car, though. I realized to get the RGB effects, we do need a cable that I don't have, but absolutely love this thing. It's almost as big as the case itself. Yeah, let's get it in. Um, so double slots, so we gotta take out two of the PCI brackets here. Let's do that really quick. Um, there we go, those and screws. All right, this guy is over here. This should just pop right out. There we go, there's the first one. You know what, I'm gonna start this. And finish it off with a thumb screw. That goes there. This one pops out. All right, let's push this guy back to open it up. It's actually so exciting. I can't wait. Check it really quick. There is plastic, you know, check your parts. I found there's a bit of plastic on the motherboard. There's plastic on here. Just take it all off. The last thing you want to do is, you know, when you're gaming, and you're sending this thing sky high in temperature to melt all this off of the card. On the card, I mean. But absolutely gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. The metal finish, chunky, beefy. Ports are covered for protection. I love it. All right, it should just be a simple drop in. Let's make sure I line everything up and nothing hits. You know, this looked easier in theory. All right, that should be lighting up, but I can't see. All right, let me pause the camera really quick and see if I can get my head in there. All right, so I did give it a quick peek. I actually took out the wrong PCI Express slot. So I'm gonna put actually this one in and take out this one because it seems like it's a little bit lower than I thought it would be. So this guy is gonna go back in there. Now let's see if I can do it without this first. Now that we got that started, where did I put the piece? All right, so this guy is going back in. And 
we're actually taking this guy out. Let's try this again. Hopefully this goes a little better. Just line up the slots. Push down. Heard a little crunch. Kind of terrifying, but there it is. And like always, losing screws. All right, we just got to secure this it is double wide i mean it is hitting that third screw that's in there but it's allowing me to put both screws back in they're secured in place so i'm feeling pretty confident about this guy being um fairly secure um the one thing i want to note as you can tell looks like the cable on here is on the other side so i might I'm not sure if i want to go up and over from this side i think for the time being it should be out of the way. I'm going to go keep it the way it is. So let me get the screws. These two screws that I took out back in here to secure this motherboard in. I'll plug it in. And then, honestly, it's going to be the most terrifying part of the day. We're going to actually turn it on and see if I did this all right or messed up somewhere along the way. All right, guys. So not have you guys waiting while I unpack this stuff. Got the monitor set up. Video card is in. Everything's locked up. Like I mentioned, the two... 8 pin connectors are in and as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video my super minimal clearance between the fan and the GPU nothing's touching this is actually my first time booting it up um, so pretty much this will tell us if I messed up or I did this right well guys I just turned the power surge on and that looks promising. I mean, the computer's not on. I'm not sure if that's a standby feature, but moment of truth. That looks promising. No sparks, no nothing. We got one fan, the exhaust fan, the rear fan, and the video card. Sweet. Thanks for joining me, guys. It's been a treat. I hope hopefully somewhere, somewhere you guys learned something. I know I learned a lot. Unfortunately, it's not something I'm going to do all the time, but I'm glad I could share it with you guys. I love it. I had to come back before I say goodbye. There she is. Sweet.